I'll say this about prayer. God won't make you eat, but He will let you get hungry. Amen? Amen. He won't make you eat. Won't put a gun to your head. You gotta pray, you gotta pray, you gotta pray. That that that's not the way to go into prayer. He will make you get awful hungry, though. God, may you make us hungry to pray and to connect with you. And God, may we reject counterfeits. Scripture. The parable of the widow and the unjust judge. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He's telling you why he's telling you the story. Told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming in and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while I refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge said. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry them day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Amen. We shift to our next scripture. Parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. He told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humble, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. God, be with us in a special way as we feast at your communion table and as we learn more about prayer. Be with us in a special way. It's in your name we pray. Amen. We are always either drawing near to God or falling away. There is no holding pattern. You're either getting closer to God or you're getting farther away. There's no such thing as a holding pattern pattern with God. We are called to pray and not lose heart. For the first parable, just three, I pray quick foci, focuses, however you want to say it. There's a focus on principle. There's a choice here. Jesus First verse, Jesus said, I'm telling you this so you pray and don't lose heart. So there's a choice, there's a principle, going on with God or giving up on God. I have had people say to me, I'm retiring from this faith thing. I can't take it anymore. Somebody just was so profoundly affected by a loss that they just said, I'm, I'm out of here with God. And they know what they said. Just walked away from the Lord. When life gets tough, there's a choice. Going on with God or giving up on God. And that can take different shapes and sizes. But there's a focus on principle. I pray that we go on with God. A bunch of people walked away from the Lord in John chapter 6. Peter said, to whom else can we go? You got the words of eternal life. 
should also focus on purposes, on, on, on persons, I'm sorry, focus on persons. There's a widow and a judge. There is nobody on the face of this earth more powerless than this lady, and there was no one on the face of this earth more powerful than this judge. He didn't care about God. He didn't care what people thought of him. He was corrupt, and yet we hear this story. The, the translation literally was, this lady may come back and slap me in the face. That's the, the literal Greek in this. And the story is here that if a corrupt judge, you don't care about people, don't care about God, if he will even respond to a powerless lady's request, how much more will a loving God respond to his people who are talking to him? Amen? If, he, if this guy can do something nice, this rogue, if this guy can do something nice, how much more can a loving God? And then there's a focus on practice. Help us, Jesus. And yet when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? He, it doesn't say will he find prayer on earth. The prayer thing is a faith thing. Oh, it's interesting. Two things were not said. And when the Son of Man comes, he will not find faith. Or it doesn't say, when the Son of Man comes, he will find faith. It's a question asked to you and to me in our relationship with God. Will God find faith in us? Again, Comparing God to this rogue judge. If a rogue, if a rogue judge can do something kind, how much more will the loving Father? You know, when Jesus asked this question, to me it reminded me of, I flashed back, and I had a couple flashbacks today. Um, in the garden, I never heard that song in church. I, was, I went to an Episcopal church. We didn't sing songs like that. I learned that song because my mother sang it when she cleaned the house. So that, that's one of, uh, you know, that's one of my memories. I also remember my mom saying to me as a little boy, can you say thank you? It was a loaded question. Jesus is asking us this morning, can you have faith? Can you have faith in a loving God who wants the best for you? Now next week we're going to talk about Jacob. We're going to have fun with Jacob. Jacob, his name means heel grab. And I mean, this, is, this story is in the Bible. He struggles with God and prevails. You know, for those who want to check out, an argument with God is so much better than checking out. Amen? You realize how much leeway you got? Read this thing. Read his word. Read the Psalms. My God. Don't check out. Wrestle with God. Stay with him. Why did you do that? He won't throw you out of the prayer chamber when you ask. One of my favorite messages is God's healing comes in different shapes and sizes. So, sometimes you've got to pay attention to be open to that. Okay, shifting now. Okay, so that's the first parable. The second one, we're going to do more on this in the Bible study this Wednesday night. There's also a calling. This is in the second parable. The Pharisee and the tax collector, this, you know, people in the community will say, this Pharisee ain't saved, who can be saved? I mean, you know, this is an upstanding member of the community. And the tax collector was a sellout to the Romans. You know, taking our money, giving it to the Romans. But then they go to prayer. The Pharisee judges down. He compares himself to unholy men and women. You know, comparing yourself to other people, you can always find a favorable comparison. At least I'm not filling the blank. 
The Pharisee judges downward. The tax collector judges upward. You know, and some people cite the golden rule, love each other the way you want to be loved. But that's the golden rule. Jesus has gone higher than that. He has a titanium rule. Just as I love you, you should love one another. Uh -oh. So that's the new standard that God, that Jesus wants his followers to live by. And this tax collector connects with God. God be merciful. The word merciful here means be propitiated to me. Nine out of ten times I take seminary words and put them in simple language. Every now and then I need to take simple language and give it a seminary word. You know what propitiation means? It means this, this tax collector is saying to me, You've taken care of my sin. Now please love me. In the comfortable words in the Episcopal Church that I was raised in, in the communion liturgy, if anyone has sinned, we have an advocate of the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins. He's the perfect offering for our sins. But it doesn't stop there. He's not just the perfect offering for our sins. He's got a plan for each of our lives. He's got a plan for each of our lives. Help us, Lord. Prayer is an expression of absolute dependence upon God. This tax collector goes into the temple. And, you know, beware of false humility. Like, whoa, well, you know, like, oh. Uh, I'm, I'm humble, I'm no good. At least I'm not like that Pharisee. That's a false humility. You go to God with your need. God, I need your help to open that door. God, I need your help to cross the intersection. Man lost his life at the inter intersection here. Don Petrie told Gwen, told us early when we came here. You see the green light on Route 130? Don't go. Look. Then go. <laughs> Poor truck driver yesterday, he didn't go fast. He probably did look, but he was making the left-hand turn to go northbound. The car glanced off another car, went right under him. It took him four hours. We're just thankful there was one person in the car. Help us, Jesus. Where there is a need, there is a time for prayer. Dependence upon God is power. The biggest name you and I can ever drop is the name of Jesus. Do you have a relationship with God? Do you have a life of prayer? You know, one time I heard a Pentecostal minister say, you know, you're in the cereal aisle, you know, and you ask God, raisin bread, you know, rice krispies. You know, it's a start. Maybe you need to pay more attention to the checkout line when the person in front of you doesn't have enough money. But you're packing tithe. It's not your money, it's God's. And God has you there to help the person out in front of you. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. You never know. You never know. And that's why we pray. Dependence on the Lord is power. Help us to pay attention to her in this new year. Republicans need to pay attention to Democrats. Democrats need to pay attention to Republicans. Independence don't need to think they're superior. We need the Lord. We need the Lord in the church. I had a professor one time said, I went to a conservative seminary. He said,
says something like this. This is my spin. I went to a conservative seminary. I learned how to believe. I went to a liberal seminary and I felt like I was loved and accepted. Amen. Help us, Lord. Help us, Jesus. Desperately help us in our hearts, in our homes, in your church. Make a way and help us to pay attention as you make the way. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We need you. Be with us in this time. And Lord, uh, have your hand upon us and guide us. And bless this time of Holy Communion. Be with us in this sacrament. Sacrament is just a fancy word for connecting with you.